I'm Jessica Ryan Keeney. I'm an attorney licensed to practice law in the state of California. I'm the Department of Child Support Services attorney for two small Northern California counties, and I've been practicing family law since I was sworn into the California bar in December of 2009. What I'm about to present in this video, anything that's in the description, the comments, anything linked in the description, it's not legal advice. It's not legal advice from me. It's not legal advice from the Department of Child Support Services. It is for educational purposes only. Having said that though, let's get educated. What does it mean when a party or an attorney rests on their pleadings? Well, basically, it means that party or attorney is not going to present any other evidence or have any oral testimony taken regarding what was asked for in the motion or what they put in their response or any of the other court documents or pleadings that were served and filed and that are associated with this particular hearing. It's always a good idea to reserve over the ability to present rebuttal evidence though. And basically what that means is just because I or another party or attorney in a case rests on their pleadings doesn't mean the other side is going to. The other side may present evidence that needs rebuttal. And so you wanna make sure that you've reserved over the ability to present evidence or have oral testimony taken to rebut what's presented by the other side. So why does somebody rest on their pleadings? Well, by and large, it's to make the hearing go faster. Family law courts are usually very busy dealing with very important matters, and there are a lot of people who need their case heard and they need a court order. And on the law and motion calendar, there's a very limited amount of time for the court to hear a case and make a decision. So resting on one's pleadings can make the process go faster and get people in and out of court faster. On the private side, an attorney may have, a family law attorney may have one or two, maybe a couple more cases on calendar in one particular day. But in the 4D courtroom, the child support attorney and the Department of Child Support Services could have anywhere from three, although that's rare, to 50 or more cases on calendar that day. That's a lot of cases to get through. The process can be sped up a lot by a party resting on their pleadings. Now, just because one party rests on their pleadings doesn't mean the other party has to. Only you can decide if it's appropriate for you to rest on your pleadings. Having said that, if you appear in any of the courtrooms that I am going to be appearing in, you may hear me rest on my pleadings or rest on the pleadings of my client, which is the Department of Child Support Services. And now you know exactly what that means. Now you should always be prepared when you go to court, but you never know if somebody is going to rest on their pleadings, which means you might not hear the arguments that that party made in their pleadings, you're not going to hear the evidence or see any additional evidence other than what that party put in their pleadings. So it's especially important to make sure that you go through the motion and you make a list of everything that's being asked for, all of the arguments that are being made, and all of the evidence that's presented. You're gonna to wanna to do the same thing for any response that's filed, even if it's your response, for any reply or any other document or pleading filed in that case relating to that particular hearing, which if you're in a 4D courtroom is gonna be child support related. I'll save for another video, a more in-depth look at how somebody might go about preparing for a child support case or a family law case. But for now, you know what it means to rest on your pleadings. Before I close and sign off, I want to make sure that we are on the same page about what pleadings are. So pleadings are motions, they're declarations, they're responses. Basically, they're the documents served and filed in a court case. And a motion is basically a legal document that's filled out, 
served and filed in a court case so that somebody can ask for court orders. The most common motions in family law cases, including 4D child support cases, are the notice of motion, an order to show cause, or a request for order. There are other types of motions, other names for motions, other ways to ask for certain uh, orders in the family law courtroom, but by and large, those are the most common motions that you're gonna see. And from the Department of Child Support Services, the most common motions you're going to see are the notice of motion governmental and the, oh, order to show cause and affidavit for contempt. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. I won't provide legal advice, but it can be a good way to come up with new topics for videos so that we can give more educational videos. If you have any comments, go ahead and put those in the comments. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, click the bell so that you get notifications when we put out new content. As always, thank you for tuning in.